Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel and today let me show you what are the best PCs you can build in the month of January for 2024 with three of them ranging from $500 to $2,000. Now since this video is being put out in January after the holiday season a lot of prices for popular CPUs and GPUs have changed dramatically and coming up with a good quality PC build list is a bit more difficult than before, especially if you want something that's still going to be worth your dollar and not overpriced. And fortunately, I've got a pretty neat website that'll actually help us out through today's video. And no, it's not a sponsor, but it is PCBuilds.gg, which is this cool little website I've been working on with some buddies in the background for the last six months. But I think this will be really nice in helping show you guys what are the most up-to-date and best PC builds that I recommend within a certain month of the year. And if you guys want to check out this website, play around with it as we've got some cool little knickknacks here. I'll have it linked in the description below along with these PC builds I'm going to showcase in this video. But making cool websites like this isn't cheap. So real quick, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Real quick, there's a giveaway at the end of this ad. So stay tuned. Level up your PC gaming hardware this holiday season with Cooler Master, like with their Cooler Master Atmos Liquid CPU Cooler. This was easily one of the coolest installation and unboxing experiences I ever had with an AIO, as everything was really well laid out in the actual packaging itself with instructions printed on the cardboard boxes that came with all the components. So not only is this really easy to follow, but all of that reduces the amount of materials needed to package everything in the box, meaning that there's reduced carbon emissions with the Atmos Liquid CPU cooler. That said, it is a Cooler Master product. You will be able to customize it if you want to dial in the RGB perfectly, and you can even 3D print your own custom pump badges onto the Master Liquid Atmos. Then if you want one of the coolest PC building experiences possible, then I recommend you consider using the Cube 500 Flatpak as your PC case, as you literally have to build the PC case from the ground up. And despite that, there's plenty of versatility with the Cube 500, as you can support different motherboard sizes, radiator configurations, power supply configurations, storage configurations, and a lot more. And once again, you can personalize this case to your liking with custom colored front panels and additional accessories. Then if you need it power, but in a small package, then Cooler Master has the VSFX Platinum 1100. And this is the exact power supply in my personal editing PC, and it is enough for an RTX 4090 and an i9-14900K. And this is one of the only power supplies of its kind at its size that can support up to 1300 watts. And as promised, Cooler Master is hosting an end of the year giveaway, which you can win potentially tons of different Cooler Master items. So I'll have a link to that as well as the other Cooler Master products I just mentioned in the description below. All right, so for our first PC build, I'm gonna go ahead and let's put the slider below $1,000. So we've narrowed down our results to two builds. I already know the CPU and GPU of this first combo. So uh, we're gonna do Intel for the CPU and then we're gonna go, oh yeah, okay. So both of my budget builds are actually both Intel CPU and GPUs. But for the $500 one, right now it's target is going to be 1080p, 1440p, 1080p 144 FPS and 1080p 60 FPS, and it can also do streaming. So let's go ahead and click on it, see what the parts are. So for the CPU, I've got the i3-12100F. One thing I noticed is that a lot of budget Ryzen CPUs jacked up in price after the holiday season. And this i3 from Intel is still about $100 on Newegg and Amazon. Although Best Buy, that's certainly not right. Oh. Okay, uh, I'll look into this later. But yeah, this four core CPU is still going to be plenty for a budget gaming PC. And now that knowing that other popular budget CPUs from AMD, like the 5500 and 5600 start at like $140, and this is undercutting them by $40 in price, the $40 you save with this CPU can afford you a pretty decent GPU like the Intel Arc A580. Now, this is one of the few GPUs that didn't have its pricing dramatically change post holiday season. This is still on a slight discount of $10 at $170, at least on Amazon and Newegg, which is kind of neat. 
and this is going to get you some pretty solid 1080p gaming performance and my only complaint is that it should honestly be about 10 to 20 dollars cheaper and its power consumption is fairly high but if you compare this to like say the rx 6600 and rtx 3050 both of those gpus are above 200 dollars right now they're no longer on a nice discount whereas this a580 is still 170 so in the current market it's a good budget gpu and then for the rest of this build it's pretty straightforward grab yourself a micro atx b660 motherboard because this is a 12th generation cpu you don't need to get a b760 motherboard if you don't want to so we can go with the cheaper b660 board here from asrock then for the ram since that is a ddr4 motherboard which is intentional as we want to save money on this build we are going to go with a standard kit of ddr4 ram clocked at 3200 megahertz with a cat latency of 16 of course 16 gigabytes that's still plenty even in 2024, I don't see any signs of you having to potentially throw in 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's more of a DDR5 system thing. Then for the case, because I've used this one before, I've actually gone ahead and went with the Q300L version two from Cooler Master. This is the same case that I used for my $600 gaming PC build. So if you want to create this $500 gaming PC build, I'm letting you know it's nearly the same as my $600 gaming PC build. Same CPU, same motherboard, pretty much the same RAM, pretty much the same GPU, and the same case. So if you wanted to build this, I got a build tutorial that I showed you how to do that. Then for the power supply, once again, <laughs> I've used this power supply a bunch before, but grab yourself an A550BN from MSI. 550 watts is enough for this PC, but there isn't any included Wi-Fi on the motherboard. So I do have a Wi-Fi 6E card that is bundled in with this computer list here. If you wanted that, or if you're gonna be next to your Wi-Fi router, then you know, go ahead and grab an ethernet cable, plug in your motherboard into the router. But there you have it. That is my $500 gaming PC built for the month of January. And let's check out my next one that I recommend. So let's go back. We no longer want Intel CPU and GPU. And let's go ahead and raise the budget slider above $1,000. Okay. So here we have my $1,000 gaming PC build. It's targeted towards 1440p, 144 FPS, 1440p, 60 FPS, and even extremely high frame rate 1080p gaming at 240 FPS. If you wanted to do say esports games at a really high frame rate like Fortnite. Not only can it do streaming like the $500 one, but it can also do some pretty good video editing and VR. For the CPU, get yourself a Ryzen 5 7600, or if you wanna save yourself some money, go on AliExpress and pick up a Ryzen 5 7500F. But if you didn't wanna go the effort of doing that, I have a Ryzen 5 7600 linked right here on pcbuilds.gg. Right now its price is a bit inflated, which is why we don't see the 7600X here instead, but it'll definitely get the job done. Its single threaded performance is too good to pass up. It beats out other processors that have more cores than it in its same price range, simply because it has the more up-to-date and superior CPU architecture of Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7000. Then for the GPU, Fortunately, you can still get a 6750XT for a pretty nifty price. If we check right now on Newegg and Amazon, I think they're $330. Oh, this one's out of stock. We'll fix that. On Amazon though, this should be, okay, it's only 340. That'll update in pricing eventually. But I'm glad to see that the 6700XT and 6750XT still retain some pretty good pricing even after the holidays. And realistically, if you're going to be playing on a 1440p monitor, this will play 95% of the games and pretty much any of the graphical intensities you want to throw at this graphics card with ease. Then for the rest of this build, it's pretty straightforward. Pick yourself up a micro ATX B650 motherboard to save on a little bit of money versus a full-size ATX motherboard. Don't worry, I have a cool case that we can use with this smaller motherboard. It also includes Wi-Fi, so that's taken care of. Then for the RAM, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory running at 6,000 megahertz with a cast latency of 38. This is a okay speed to cast latency ratio. Just what's impressive about it is its price because this is just at $100 and I've seen worse than this. So this is, I think, one of the better RAM kits. 
Then for storage, this, okay, this team group, Cardera A440 Pro is really cracked for its price. It's a high-end PCI Gen 4.0 SSD that I think has read and write speeds up to like 7,000 megabytes per second. Yeah, it's really fast and it's only $60 and the SSDs you can get for $10 cheaper than this are gonna be standard PCI Gen 3.0 SSDs that may not even feature DRAM, whereas this has all the goodies at a discounted price. Then for the case, since I have used this one before, I have this micro ATX coup. Okay, that's weird. Okay, I I know what happened. Uh, anyways, <laughs> this is a GIM micro ATX PC case. This is the exact same case I used in my $1,000 gaming PC build guide from August, which is still pretty much up to date. It's literally this PC build. But this case, it gets the job done. It could be a little bit better, but I think with this case, it got slightly updated because now you can fit fans on the bottom and you can fit three 120s on the top, whereas before, I think you could only fit two 120s or two 140s. On the B-roll, you'll see what's up, but yeah. And then for the power supply, so this is a discounted, or I think it was discounted, it's not anymore as I think it's, yeah, $80, but still pretty decent power supply. The Corsair CXM CX650M 650 watt 80 plus modular. Yeah, I mean, it's good enough. And the wattage is definitely enough as well for the CPU and GPU combo we have in this build. And it's an 80 plus bronze Corsair power supply. It's gonna last you a while. It's not one of those sketchy brands, far from. All right, then what is my last PC build? Well, let's go ahead and range or put the slider here all the way to the top. In fact, actually, let me go ahead and refresh the page. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> the last build I wanna showcase is one that I just made here on the channel, but that is because I think it's a better overall build than the $1,500 and $750 builds that I have also showcased on this website. As you can see, this $2,000 gaming PC build is targeted towards 4K, 240 FPS, 4K, 144 FPS, and 4K, 60 FPS gaming. If you at all think about pairing up a 1440p monitor with this build, you're crazy because I did this exact build in my most recent PC build guide and it crushed it at 4K. I don't see the need for 1440p and you're gonna achieve those high frame rates with a CPU like the Ryzen 5 7800X3D. You don't need any more than this very humble eight core CPU. You only need more than this if you're doing CPU intensive simulations or calculations, like even if you're a content creator and you're gonna be doing gaming videos and streaming, those don't really require more than eight cores in all honesty. So save yourself the money, get this excellent gaming CPU. It is the fastest of its kind, thanks to the 3D Vcash. And then to pair up with that, Get yourself a 7900 XTX, and this is another Radeon GPU that hasn't undergone a severe price increase even after the holiday season. You can still pick these up for under $1,000, which is still below MSRP, which is freaking awesome. And certainly, the GPU of choice over an RTX 4080 and RTX 4090, which right now are retailing for way above MSRP, like especially for the RTX 4090, which is like what, 2,000 and something dollars? Whereas this, you still get it below $1,000, it can do pretty much 95% of what an RTX 4090 can do at less than half the price. And the rest of the build here is pretty straightforward. Once again, this is pretty much a carbon copy of my $2,000 PC build, but it's in black, meaning we can save a little bit of money on aesthetics and put it towards some slightly higher quality components like a B650E motherboard here from ASRock, which is $190. Then for RAM, pretty much the same as the $1,000 PC build, but we're gonna bump up the clock speed to 6,400 megahertz and lower the cast latency to 32 for even more performance. We're gonna double the storage to get a two terabyte M.2 SSD. And I think for this build guide, this is the same SSD that I use in my personal gaming PC build. Once again, it's just a high-end PC Gen 4.0 SSD with wicked read and write speeds with DRAM. It definitely gets the job done. Then for the case, you can go with a cube style PC case like that of the Montec King 95 Pro, this time in black, so you do save about $10. So if you want it in white, watch my PC build guide. If you want it in black, follow this build list. And then for the power supply, all you need is an 850 watt 80 plus gold power supply. 
fully modular like the Montex Sentry, which was $90, but now it's $125. Wow. <laughs> the new year really screwed up even more prices, even as I'm filming this video. But that's why I've created this website. So that way I can keep a full category and catalog of PC build lists that I can continually update from time to time rather than having to produce a full 40 minute long PC build guide for a certain set of PC parts that may have unreliable stock and inventory because a lot of people watch those build guides and then they buy up all the parts for it and then cause the prices of those parts to go up and then people are like, oh my God, this is no longer a whatever PC build, it's like more expensive. That is why I have this website here. So if you ever wanted to know what my favorite picks are for what are the best PC builds for X amount of dollars for different CPUs and GPUs with different performance criterias and different features, you can find that all on PCBuilds.gg. It is gonna be featured a lot on the channel this year. This is the little thing I've been working on for the last six months, like I said at the start of the video. So that is it. Let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video or if I can do anything else to make this more exciting. Otherwise, once again, all of these PC build lists will be linked in the description below, along with PCBuilds.gg. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching, and this is the Scatterbolt channel, signing out.